Hey everyone, today in my video I'm going to talk about probably one of my most asked questions about Dylan and that is the all important S word, sleep. How do I get him to sleep? What do I do for his bedtime routines? As most parents experience, especially those who have a child on the spectrum, sleep is something of a rarity. I started to look at his, at his bedroom, at his environment. How could I calm his senses? After a really busy day at school or wherever he had been, he gets very oversensitized. His brain can't stop thinking. That's when a lot of the meltdowns happen. So I needed to make his bedroom as calm and tranquil as possible. Can I just go a present for you? You have a present for me? Let me see. Your heart is gonna get insane. I'm ready. Right here. <gasps> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, Dylan. A, a this is amazing. Bye. Bye. So this is our corner of the room where we read some books. I have a lot of books for autism and siblings. I will also put that on my website, some of the books I really recommend reading before bed. One of my favorites is Zenny the Muzzy Bug. It's by a lovely friend of mine called Ashley, and it's an amazing book. Basically, it's like a meditation book about how to get rid of that fuzzy feeling in your tummy when you feel anxious. That's a really good book. And also, Good Night Me, because who doesn't like to say good night to their knees that hold their legs together all day, you know? So my first thing when I was designing the boys' bedroom was to try and make it as calming as possible. So we chose really thick carpets and a really thick rug. It absorbs a lot of the sound, so it feels like a nice cocoon in here. Also, because we spend a lot of time on the ground in here, playing, doing sensory touch, obviously had to be nice and cozy to feel. So when it came to choosing the decor of his room, I didn't want it to be dull and boring, but I wanted it to be a calming space that the boys wanted to be in. So I chose a very light gray from Far and Ball called Ammonite to go on the wall, as it's kind of a fresher gray. Oh, maybe not the crystal. We decided to do a feature wall of stars because Dylan loves stars from the Great Little Trading Company and the rug from the White Company. Obviously the smell was really important as well. So when painting a new room, the reason I chose Farron Ball paint is because it doesn't have a smell and it's non-toxic. Dylan used to jump in his bed, so he likes repetition. And he would literally spend hours and hours at night jumping. And I had to stop this. So I did a bit of research and realized that a lot of the mattresses and the mattresses that we used were spring. So basically it was like being on a trampoline. Why would you go to sleep when you could be on a trampoline all night? So we went for a memory foam mattress. Now there are lots of different options out there. This was honestly one of the best investments we ever made. He tried bouncing on it the first night, realized he couldn't bounce and he slept longer than he'd ever slept. So that was amazing. And the baby's climbing up the stairs. What? Where's the teddy bears? Where's the baby? And the doggy. Woof, woof. So one of the reasons why we chose these particular bunk beds is that the bottom is big enough for Dylan. It's a double on the bottom and it's a single on the top. It doesn't look as cute in bedrooms, I'm not gonna lie. I, you know I love my interiors, but for Dylan, he can spread out. He has all his teddy bears in there and it makes him feel like he's in a little cave. Now, weighted blankets are really good for children um, who have trouble sleeping, but they can also be quite costly. So we decided instead of going for a weighted blanket, he's got a thick duvet or a feather duvet. Um, we have a comforter which goes on the top and I have another blanket which goes on the top. I do tend to keep their room quite cool because he does get quite hot at nighttime, but he sleeps really well with that. You can get them in different um, thicknesses. So this works really well for us instead of a weighted blanket. We put this window seat in because Dylan, like I said, likes to feel cozy and likes to feel pressure. So this is his little space that he comes if he wants a bit of downtime, quiet time. We just put memory foam and just wrapped all this in. And he likes to look out of the window and look at all the people or pull funny faces at them. Because Dylan and Luca share a room, I wanted to create a space for Dylan that was just his, that he could go to with his friends or by himself and play his games. But we didn't really have much space in our house to do that. We're a big family. Where could he go if he needed somewhere? So we decided to look up and we have a lot of attic space. So we came up with an idea, which I think is kind of cool. Come into the secret room. Follow me up. I can't actually stand up in here. I feel a bit like Alice in Wonderland. Uh, we have some beds in here, so we do have sleepovers in here. Again, we have really nice sensory carpet. Man, I really wish you could feel this. It actually feels really good. <laughs> Just come back in five minutes, will you? <laughs> we also put in a little bunk bed in there because Dylan likes his little caves. 
I got that idea from actually Santa Claus the movie because I really like Santa Claus and Mr. Santa Claus bed. I thought it was pretty cool. So um, yeah, we, we designed that. And we did this just before Christmas last year as we were having all the family over and we really wanted a place where Dylan could come by himself and be uninterrupted. So this worked out really well and was actually really cost effective and it's been amazing. Our bedtime routine starts at about 6 p.m. after the mayhem of dinner and they have made a huge mess downstairs. The best way I find to help unwind Dylan after a busy day and after he gets very stressed out at school and everything is to give him a really nice long warm bath with magnesium salts. Now magnesium is really good because it helps relax um, the muscles of any tension and Dylan tends to hold his shoulders up quite a lot and he's quite uncomfortable in his body so I really find that giving him a nice warm bath at night time you can really see that it relaxes him and it's one of his favorite things to do and this kind of signals that it's the end of the day it's time to chill out. So six o'clock all the iPads go off and I put him in the bath for about 20 minutes. While Dylan's in the bath I also talk to him about his day or anything he really wants to like talk to me about. Sometimes he'll talk to me, sometimes he just wants to be left alone, which is fine. After the bath, I put on some more magnesium. It is a sleep lotion. Okay, next. No, not for me. Yes, it would actually legs, come on. Now sometimes he doesn't want this on his body, he doesn't like the feeling of it, but sometimes he actually wants me to massage his legs. This is a really good one to use. It's really nice and it's a nice consistency. After I've put the magnesium lotion on, I've put his pajamas on and we tend to just chill out in his room for a bit. I do try and read books to them, but Dylan's just not really interested in reading books. He has to try and get out any, we call them wiggles or fidgets that he has that he wants to get out. <laughs> So he quite likes a lot of sensory play at this time. So he likes when I massage his, his hands and his arms like this, using kind of like rough pressure. Sometimes, strange as this sounds, he likes to lie down and I put cushions on top of him and then I lie on top of him. Um, or now his dad does when he's home because he's actually getting really, really big now and doing sensory play with him is becoming a little bit harder for me. Now this might not work for your child, it depends if they like soft touch or strong touch. For Dylan, it works really, really well. My beautiful, oh, my beautiful nose! That's beautiful nose. So once we have brushed the kids' teeth using an autism-friendly toothpaste, which we will talk about later, we then hop into bed. This is when Dylan really likes to try and verbalize everything that's happened during the day. This is also when I try and ask questions. It's very difficult as Dylan isn't very good at telling me how he feels. So asking direct questions like, did you play with Joey today? Did you have sausages for lunch today? If you ask a question, how did your day go? They're not gonna know how to answer that. So I ask direct questions to Dylan and try and formulate a picture of how his day actually went. It is a really good tip to do is to ask the teachers at your school what your child did that day because then you can also say to them, oh, so you read so-and-so book today or you did this today. We then have something called happy spray. So as I said before, Dylan really suffers with anxiety and at nighttime all his stress has come out and I was finding it really hard for him to get to sleep. So in order to try and reduce his anxieties, we have this happy spray, which gets rid of bad dreams. You can use any spray. I've used water with a few lavender drops and chamomile drops in. Currently we're using Made by Cooper's Sleepyhead because I actually really like it myself. We also have dream catchers because I try and explain to Dylan that the bad dreams get stuck because whenever he has a bad dream, he didn't want to go sleep, which again causes problems. We then do a one to 10, although currently it's one to 20 list. <laughs> it keeps getting longer. It's basically a rundown of what's happening okay. tomorrow. Number one, bed. Number two, wake up. Number three, breakfast. Number four, clothes on. Number five, we go to school. When Dylan was nonverbal and our communication wasn't great, we have a board where you stick things on and we would formulate his day. Once he could understand a bit better, I wrote it down and drew, you know, like stick figures. Now School, I just number say number 13, it. Luca has theatrics. <laughs> Dylan, number 14, uh, you come home with Hadley. Number 15, you have dinner. On a day off theatrics. 
a lot of autistic children don't realize that if you go to sleep, you actually wake up again. So it's really important for us to say to Dylan, number one, go to bed, number two, go to sleep, number three, wake up again. So the waking up again, I remember the first time he turned around and said, that's really good to know that I wake up again. So this was an anxiety of his that I didn't even know about. Good night. The final thing we do is I put on some meditation for them. Dylan was finding it really difficult to go to sleep because the thoughts in his head were just getting too much for him. I found a children's meditation. Dylan didn't like running water because it made him want to go to the toilet. He doesn't like imagination things, so he didn't like it when they said, imagine you're riding on a train to the moon. No, because Dylan knows there's no train that goes to the moon, so for him that was ridiculous. He likes the one about your body, so breathing, how does your tummy feel? How does your legs feel? All that kind of thing. So you can find it all on YouTube. You'll find the one that works for you. Good night, Mom. I love you. I love you too, Mom. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. So I hope you guys have found this episode useful of learning about our bedtime routines and what we do to ease anxieties and stress. Please leave a comment below, like, share us, and we'll see you next Sunday. I love you. <laughs>